Thanks a lot. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press, on behalf of the Free UN Coalition for Access, thanks a lot for the briefing. I wanted to ask about the overall meeting. I noticed that the International Monetary Fund is here, and they were promoting their, their uh, attendance. I wonder, what do you, I mean, what do you think that the UN system, including at least peripherally the IMF, can actually do on these issues? How do you think that what you're saying would apply, to example, for example, to a country like Greece, which is facing sort of the inter international pressures which actually impact on the, on the rights of workers? And then I just, if you end up ha have time, I, I, if you could say something about the relations between your country and, and Saudi Arabia and what's described as your country's ethical foreign policy would be, uh, I'd appreciate that. Thanks. Absolutely. Uh, first, uh, on IMF, yes, uh, there, is, uh, uh, there is a task for also for IMF in this context. Not only IMF, the World Bank, the OECD, uh, the World Trade Organization. So that was my point earlier today uh, when I gave my speech, that we do not have to invent new institutions, new forms. We do, ha and we have ILO, not least. Uh, so we do have the forms. The, the question is, how do we use them in such a way that we create uh, a good uh, conditions for, for uh, um, employers and that we can have... Uh, we need uh, this uh, dialogue between different parties. Uh, and that is why ILO, ILO is brilliant. I mean, you have, there you have the, 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 the politics, uh, the democracy, but you also have the social partners. And those are the three key partners that need to find a way on a global level. How do we, how do we handle this at a global level? There's one thing at the workplace level, national level, but now with the global economy, what do you do? So, so uh, I, I definitely believe IMF have a, a very important role to play. Well, uh, about Greece, uh, that's a, a, an agreement between um, Greece and the rest of the Eurogroup, how they want to handle, how they can handle the, the situation. Uh, I will not interfere with that, uh, but I, I have said one thing in the European Union, and I think although you have difficult times, as they have. Sweden had difficult times in the early 90s, mid-90s, the whole 90s, you could say, to be honest. <clears throat> but the, the problems were raised in the early 90s. So we had a, a, a very a large debt, um, and we had to change it. So the social democratic government that came into power in 1994, in the autumn, they had to first take care of the debt, but also at the same time create some kind of hope how, what is the message of hope so that the people in general do not only feel there is no way out? There is a way out, but we have to take very tough uh, decisions at the time. And the hope at the time when the, when the government presented very tough uh, decisions was education, training, showing that there will be a future after this. We are investing in more more uh, education on universities. We are giving, uh, as it turned out when all this was over, they gave 800,000, 900,000 people a higher education, lifting their competence level, meaning that people could see, well, after this, there's a hope for me. So no matter what you do, and that is up to different countries, we, we, we're not um, interfering in that. But I think that's a good principle. Although you have tough times, hard times, how do you show the hope uh, for the future? Regarding Saudi Arabia, we, uh, we are getting back to uh, a normal good situation relation with Saudi Arabia, and that was uh, our intention all the time, to keep a good relation. So we're seeing a, a good progress on, on that. Uh, I haven't been informed yet whether the ambassador is back. I don't think so yet. but. But he, he, the ambassador will be back in short, and we have a good relation with Saudi Arabia, and we intend to keep that. 